TV is still such a, a babysitter, uh, such a controlling influence, a hypnotizing type of one-eyed monster for most children. I mean, my children I know have never seen a cartoon they didn't like. Well, it's a vacuum filler. Uh, it's not competition for uh, a parent who wants to do something with a child. There isn't a child I ever met that wouldn't rather do something with a parent, unless the parent happens to be very dull. Most parents are not. Most parents have a great advantage. Uh, they are the center of the child's life. The child wants to spend time with them. The trouble is, parents are very busy today. Parents are working outside the home in almost every case, and they come home and dead tired, and their children, the child comes running to them. Where did you hear what happened to me today, mommy? Where did you hear what happened to me? Oh. Oh, honey, I'm so tired, I'm so busy, please, you know, why don't you do me a favor, go watch television, I'll talk to you later, and later it never comes. So forgetting about the quality of what they're watching on television, uh, think about the quantity that's time taken away from the parent-child relationship or the peer group relationship, and a three, four, five-year-old really needs uh, those real-life experiences uh, to grow, that's the way we grow. Watching television is not going to contribute to that growth. If you came home one night and, uh, and, your, and your spouse ran up and said, hey, well, where, do you, where do you hear what happened to me today? I want to tell you. And you said to her, oh, honey, I'm so tired. Do me a favor. Go watch television. Uh, you'd have to be ready to duck <coughs> when you told her that. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, your, the divorce rate would probably be a lot higher than it is today. But we casually treat children in ways that we would never think of treating our spouses. We forget that children are human beings. In fact, uh, they have greater needs than our spouses in most case, cases. So we really have to give them a little more than, than most, uh, most parents give them. And uh, we forget that because it's so easy to, to, to kick a, a child out of our life and let them grow up in front of the television set. I like to listen to people sometimes on airplanes, and I was checking some people out saying that uh, they were talking about their children, saying, oh, yeah, I've got some children, and they're so much smarter than we were. Is that true? I don't think so. No, we, we perceive differences. Uh, greater vocabulary, probably because of media viewing, uh, media, medium of television in particular. Um, it'd be hard to find a, a parochial child today, one who isn't aware of other cultures and other uh, places in, in, around the world. Uh, but basically, they're the same. They're, they're, they have the same needs. They're, they're have the same concerns. Security-related questions are the ones that you find today, that you found 40 years ago or 400 years ago. The ancient Greeks were probably uh, answering these questions for their children. Who am I? Am I loved? What does the future hold for me? Uh, and, and what has really changed dramatically is the structure of the nurturing system, the, the structure of our family, so that we have, it more, have more difficulty answering those questions and, and focusing our attention on uh, children today. So that's what really has changed more than children themselves have changed. Yeah, and the family structure. Most people had two parents in the 50s. Most people had two parents and conventionally mother stayed at home, cooked the bacon that pop brought from outside the home. Uh, today, uh, almost 70% of mothers are working outside the home. We have 25% of our kids living in single parent households. And most tragically of all, really because it really does affect us terribly in the society of ours, 20% uh, of our kids live below the poverty line. Uh, and all that that brings, inadequate access to medical care, child care, uh, inadequate uh, nutrition. Six million kids uh, go hungry in America every day. Incredible. You know, this is the great, greatest country in the world. We ought to be ashamed of that. But that, that's when we talk about substance abuse, drugs, and illiteracy, and all the expensive problems we get to later in life, they didn't just happen today. They happened in, in, our, in nurturing kids when they were three, four, or five years of age. What's your gut feeling about the home alone kids? And that's most of them. Even mine do a couple hours a day. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, uh, I, I'm concerned about it uh, as a regular thing, particularly for uh, two, three, or four, four hours more a day. And a lot of kids are key children for that long. I think we ought to, uh, with the structure that we have with our school systems and everything else, uh, to be able to devise a, a, a means of taking care of kids for that period of time. And of course, somebody was going to say to you now, well, that's their problem. They had the kids and they could stay home and take care of them. That's not going to happen. These people are out there working because they have to work. They have no choice. Uh, and, and if we don't take care of them, if we fail, we're all going to pay. Every one of mm -hmm. us as taxpayers pays the high price. So we all ought to be concerned. Let's talk about the Good old days. Were they good old, the good old days of television? No, not really. The good old days were days when television was live, before tape, before editing. Production standards were not nearly as good as they are today. We deal in imagination and fantasy and a captain, and, you know, stagehands walking in front of cameras and sets falling down. Well, uh, you know, that, that doesn't contribute to the imagination of a child. Now, stagehands still walk in front of cameras and, and sets still fall down, uh, but we edit that out, and so the production standard is much higher. It's a much better program today than it was years ago. And as far as the live aspect of it and, you know, having the edge, you know, if you're a professional, uh, you have that edge whether you were taped or, or live. 
So uh, it's not, so I really want that great. <laughs> but I mean, the content was better. I mean, I think in many ways, particularly for children's television, well, well, children's well, television stinks today. Well, yeah, I think well, that, that has nothing to do with production yeah. value. And, 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 uh, what, but the content-wise, well, it, it, content. it has to do with management. Management decided we can make money off kids, and that's why we have uh, the kind of programs that we have today. And the government decided that they wouldn't regulate broadcasters, and that's why uh, today broadcasters go to the bottom line. Well, and that's why we, we have the turtles and why we have the Rambos and the monsters and everything else, because we make money. Only country in the world makes money off kids. Only country in the world. What are the three things most asked about Captain Kangaroo? How'd you ever get the name? How'd you ever get started? Uh, is Mr. Moose still dropping the ping pong balls? Right. People, the ping pong balls? And universal across generations. The parents talk to me about it today when I'm doing a personal appearance, and their three and four year old children say, I love Mr. Moose and the ping pong balls. It's just universal across those, across those years. It also hurts. You know, my head is getting sore. <laughs> What do you think was it so about those characters? I mean, it was a very simple little bunny rabbit, a little moose, but obviously it touched something. Well, sure it because did, it's the first time we ever had that experience because of television? But behind those characters is a great artist, uh, Gus Allegretti, and uh, he gave great life. He gives great life every day to Mr. Moose. He gives great life to Bunny Rabbit. Uh, without even talking, he gives great life to Bunny Rabbit. Uh, so it really, <coughs> it, it, it is, and of course the writers do great things too. Every program begins with writing, and if you have good writers, you can you can have a good program. Uh, so I think it it, it is that 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 that's a, that simple formula it has a lot to do with the way we reach uh, children in the, in the morning, in the afternoon, now on public television at all hours. And what was your favorite memory of Captain Kangaroo? A favorite thing no, that's my, or a well, person? That's my most hated question, really, because uh, I don't hate it. I'm, I'm, uh, it's not my favorite question because I don't have any. I mean, we're, we're, I guess we're about to broadcast show number 9,500. How can you think of one broadcast in, in all of that? There are no mountains, no valleys. It's all, <laughs> at least in my memory, even. I'm sure there were great things that happened that I, that I should remember and uh, things that, I that I'd like to forget and have forgotten. <laughs> I still love Mr. <coughs> Green Jeans. You know, I still can't help but think about him. Oh, he's a, he, he was a great character. He was a great human being. Again, it was the, the character was very simple, but the human being was a very complex human being. He was a, he was a wonderful man, not an actor, a musician by background, and an environmentalist before most of us ever heard of that word. And uh, he brought great stimulation to us on the set. He was, he was funny at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. That was very difficult to do. And uh, he was a great human being. We miss him personally. Uh, we still have a, a lot of the, the material that he did that still plays on. Show, but uh, we still miss his uh, his ability to uh, uh, to agitate us, to make us think about things. To, to he was a great curmudgeon, in, in the most classic sense of the word. All right, Don, sit in real quick, and then I'll do my reverses after she gets.